You might have seen my video about how long the SSD in your Mac is going to last. If you haven't, it's linked in the description. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to check the health of your Mac's SSD and see how much data it's written over its entire lifetime and potentially how much longer it's going to last. Okay, so I'm gonna be using a number of tools and techniques in this video. They're all free to use and they're not particularly complicated to use either. Let's start with something called Smart Mon Tools, which allows you to tap into the self-monitoring analysis and reporting technology system known as Smart that's built into your SSD. So first of all, you need to download SmartMon Tools. Now I will link this website down below, but once you're on smartmontools.org, you need to come over here to the jump to section and click download. Then in the table of contents, navigate down to install the OSX Darwin package and click on that. And then up here where it says download and run the latest smartmontools.dmg image, you wanna click where it says here. That will take you to the next page and then you want to click on this green button which says download latest version. Once the download has finished, you want to go into your downloads folder. You want to double click on the smartmontools.pkg. If you do get an error message like this one, just click OK. Come back to the .pkg file, right click, click open and then click open again. Now there's nothing bad about smartmon tools. This is basically just macOS double checking if you want to install this or not. Next, we're going to open up an application called Terminal. Now, if you guys have used Windows before, this is essentially the Mac OS version of Windows Command or Windows Terminal. So to open this up, a really quick shortcut is actually holding down Command on the keyboard, pressing the space button, and then typing in Terminal, and then you can see Terminal pop up there. We're gonna click on that, and I'm just going to resize this window to make it a little bit easier for you to read. Now, the first thing we want to do is make sure we're in the correct directory in terminal. So we're going to type cd space forward slash usr slash local slash sbin. And we're gonna hit the return key on the keyboard. And you can see we are now in the sbin directory, which means we can actually load up smart on tools. Now, I will also include all of these commands written in the description down below. Just bear in mind, if you try to copy and paste those commands from the description into terminal, it probably won't work. You might get an error. If that's the case, guys, just type it manually into terminal because sometimes terminal just doesn't like it when you copy and paste. So just bear that in mind. So next we're going to type ls space hyphen l and hit the return key. This will just allow us to double check if SmartMon Tools has installed correctly. And as you can see here, we do have SmartCTL and also SmartD, so that's all good. SmartCTL just allows you to essentially talk to the SSD inside your Mac directly. But to do that, first of all, we need to know what the SSD is actually called. So we can come in here and type in disk util space list, hit the return key and gyd underscore partition underscore scheme. That is going to be our disk. You can verify this by seeing the size. This is a four terabyte SSD. So that's the disk we want. And you can see the identifier or the name is disk zero. Next, we're going to type full stop forward slash smart CTL space hyphen A space forward slash dev forward slash and then the name of our disk. In my case, it is disk zero. Then we're going to hit the return key. Now you might be able to see there immediately, we get some details about the SSD on our Mac. So here where it says data units written, you can see it returns a value of 4.34 terabytes. That just means that this particular SSD over its entire lifespan has written exactly 4.34 terabytes. Same with the data units read, I've got 8.25 terabytes of total data this SSD has read. You can also see the percentage used, the available spare threshold, and the available spare. Now I'll cover exactly what these mean in a little bit, but first of all, let's bring up a third party tool called Drive DX. Now Drive DX has a 14 day free trial. After that, obviously you have to pay for it. So that's why I showed you SmartMon tools using Terminal. That's free, it'll always be free. And the second reason I showed that to you is because we now have these two separate sources of data that we can now compare and make sure that they are correct. And as you can see on Drive DX, if we come down into the health indicator page here, our data units written is 4.3 terabytes. 
And that is the same over here, 4.34 terabytes. I will also include a link to download Drive DX in the description if you are interested. Okay, so now that we know all of these figures match up and are correct, let's have a look at what they actually mean. And for this, I'm actually going to switch to my M1 MacBook Air. So this is a base model M1 MacBook Air, eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigabyte SSD. As you can see, we have written quite a bit more data than on the previous MacBook. So over the last year of using this particular machine, I've written 105 terabytes. Now, quick side note here, guys, it's important to note that this is not a realistic number. You should not compare what you're seeing on my computer or for that matter on other computers you see from other people because our usage is always going to be different to yours. For me, for example, on this machine, we've been running benchmarks, uh, lots of testing, writing lots of data to the SSD. It's been my daily driver for the last year, so 10 hours a day watching videos, Photoshop emails. We've also done a lot of swap memory testing as well. So using a lot of unoptimized non M1 native apps running on Rosetta 2. So this 105 terabyte figure is, you're probably not gonna be anywhere near that. And likewise with other computers you might see from other people, uh, they may only use their computer for an hour a day or they might use their computer 15 to 20 hours a day, you never know. So don't compare to anyone else, just look at what your specific computer is telling you. So let's actually talk about what these particular figures actually mean. So starting with the life percentage used, I'm gonna click on this, and if you guys wanna pause the screen right now, you can give this a read, and this is gonna give you an overview of what exactly that figure means. But in layman's terms, if that number reaches about 100, it means that the SSD is possibly consumed and it might possibly start to have issues or have a higher chance of failing. Doesn't mean that even if you hit 100, that's gonna happen though. As you guys can see, if you pause the video and read, you can actually go past that figure of 100. Even if you go past 100, there's a good chance the SSD may still work perfectly fine. It also does not mean that you've used up 7% of the storage space on your SSD. And if we come over here to Smart Mon Tools, we can see the available spare threshold is 99% and the available spare is 100%. So for this particular machine that's written over 100 terabytes in 12 months, that's pretty good. And if you guys have watched my previous video on this topic where I go into detail on just how long SSDs can last, even these 256 gigabyte SSDs, it's very likely it's gonna hit two petabytes of data writes before it fails. Two petabytes is obviously 2,000 terabytes, which is a lot. Uh, right now, we're sitting at 105 terabytes over the last 12 months. And as you can see, that's only used up about 7% of the life percentage. So if we do some quick maths, so let's assume that once we hit 100 for this life percentage, the SSD is going to fail. Let's do 100 divided by 7% that we've already used and that is 14.2. So that means I can keep writing 105 terabytes on this machine every single year for 14.2 years until this particular number here hits 100 and I might start to see some issues or the SSD might die. Okay, so moving back to my new M1 Max computer that's only written 4.3 terabytes, let's talk about how you can determine how much data you write every single day. And this is gonna be helpful to estimate how long your SSD will last with your current usage. So there's two ways to find out this number. The first one is download Drive DX or Smart Mon Tools and find out how much data your SSD has written in total. And then you want to divide that by roughly how many days you've owned the computer. So using my M1 MacBook Air that's written 105 terabytes as an example, 105 terabytes is 105,000 gigabytes. If we divide that by 365 days, that's how many days I've been using that machine for, that works out to be around 287 gigabytes per day I was writing to the SSD. And again, guys, that's worst case scenario. I was really slamming that SSD for the last 12 months. So your usage is probably going to be significantly less than that. Now, the second way to find this out is actually a little bit more accurate because obviously your usage will change from day to day 
and week to week. So if I just shut down both of these programs here and I actually bring up Activity Monitor, if I come into the Disk tab here, you can see I have a column here called Bytes Written. If you don't have that column, right click up here where it says Process Name and make sure that you click or select Bytes Written. And this is going to tell you how many gigabytes or megabytes or whatever a particular program has written to your SSD since your computer has been last turned on. So for example, Firefox here, I do a lot of YouTube videos in Firefox, so I've written 56 gigabytes. Uh, Final Cut Pro also writes a lot to the SSD, but Final Cut Pro is not coming up right now because it's currently closed. If I were to open up that program, it would show me probably about a couple of hundred gigabytes here. So how do you find out how long your computer has been on since it was last turned off? It's pretty easy. Come up here to the Apple logo, click about this Mac. Then you wanna click system report. And then you wanna to come to software. And down the bottom here, you can see time since boot. So about six days and three hours for me. Now, if we remember that figure and look down here at the total data written, which is 948 gigabytes, we divide 948 divided by six days, that's an average of about 158 gigabytes per day I've written to this SSD over the last six days. And again, guys, this is a production machine. We do a lot of benchmarking, a lot of video editing on here. So that's pretty much worst case scenario. Again, you are probably going to be writing significantly less to your SSD. One thing to note as well, guys, is this particular figure here where it says data written, that includes external drives. So if you've plugged in an external hard drive and you've been editing off that hard drive, for example, and your Mac has been writing data to that hard drive, that's gonna be included here as well. So if you want a truly accurate idea of just how many gigabytes you write to your SSD each day, restart your computer, make sure you don't plug in any external drives, and then after three days or a week, for example, come back to Activity Monitor, check this particular box here where it says data written, and just divide that by the number of days it's been since your Mac was last restarted. But again, guys, even if you're the type of person to be writing hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes per day, like I mentioned in my previous video, a lot of these SSDs, even the small 256 gigabyte capacity SSDs can write petabytes and petabytes of data before failing. So again, going back to my M1 MacBook Air, 105 terabytes per year, a lot of those 256 gigabyte SSDs could write three, four, five petabytes, which is five thousand terabytes. So that's going to be a very, very, very long time of writing that much data per year before that drive fails. Now there's no guarantees there. SSDs can still fail at any time, even if they haven't been used much, but that's extremely rare and I wouldn't worry about it. Just gives you an idea of some of the lifespan of these SSDs. Anyway guys, any questions, make sure you join the Discord. I'll link that down below. But apart from that, thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.